Do you have fabric scraps like I do? Well, today I'm sharing some super fun fabric scrap Christmas ornaments. Welcome to Creative by Nature DIY and Decor. My name is Donna. So I grabbed an assortment of some different fabrics and I cut them down into strips. As you can see, these have got kind of a vintage romantic feel to them. I made sure that I removed any of those excess threads from those torn fabric strips. So this particular piece of lace is actually from somebody's dress that they had taken apart. So this is the sleeve. I needed to just trim off uh, any of the seams that they had. And then I continued to cut this particular piece down into some strips that were around the same width as the other strips of fabric that I already had cut down. All right, so here's my pile of fabric. I'm just continuing to go through all of these pieces and removing all those excess threads. So all my fabric strips are all ready to go. So now I'm going to start to lay them out to randomly mix them together so that they are interspersed throughout. I am going to just pile them all up and then I'm gonna to have to decide on how thick I want my bundle to be. All right, so here I'm just gonna gather them all up and I'm gonna fold it in half. I just, again, wanna see how thick this is gonna be. I am creating a tassel and I don't want it to be too, too thick. And there's a reason why, and I'll show you that in a bit. So I'm just removing some of the bulkier fabrics and then I'm gonna test it out again and I'll continue to do this until I'm happy with what I have. So I decided I want a little bit more texture. So I grabbed this bag of some scrap trims that I had. This is like a scrap piece of yarn. I love the little glittery pieces in it, but it would be a fun wintry touch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a few strips of those and include it in my fabric bundle. Of course, you can add anything that you would like to create something beautiful for your Christmas tree. Once you, you are happy with how thick it is, you can use a string to tie your bundle together in the middle. I'm just adjusting my fabric straps a bit just so that they're facing the right way. Um, I do end up changing that up a bit because they ended up flipping once I tied it, but I'll show you that here in a moment. I am using jute twine, but of course use any type of string that you would like to use for your tree. So I'm just going to tie this off with a basic knot and here you can see I'm just flipping those fabric straps or fabric scraps around just so uh, they're facing the right way so I can see those beautiful colors. So here I'm just tying the knot off. So I was actually inspired by my friend Helen over at Moss Cottage. She created one of these beautiful tassels as well, but she used hers as a charm for a journal. I'm gonna have her video link for you down below so you can check out her tutorial if you're at all interested in seeing how to turn this into a charm. But um, I, her and I, we were on the same page. We thought these would make beautiful Christmas ornaments. I have done a tassel before, but I did it in a different way, but I thought this was so much easier. So. I went into my stash of beads because that's what she had done and I am just going to find one as you can see this one's got a really large hole so I needed that to kind of fit over the top of my tassel a bit so I eliminated a little bit more fabric but I decided to make sure that my piece stays together really well and I added a dab of hot glue. Next, I continued to add some other beads. I've got this smaller one. This slips right over that hole of that large bead really well. And then I added one more small one. And I really like the three different sizes. I think that it adds a lot of interest. 
So of course you can add any um, number of beads that you'd like. Once you're happy with that, you can tie a knot off and you want your knot to be really close to the top of the beads so they're nice and tight. And then I went maybe about an inch or so higher and I tied another knot and that created the hanger for our ornament. All right, so some of my strands were a little too long, so I'm just trimming them off. And I also wanted to cut them on an angle that'll just help to prevent them from fraying any further. And then that is it. It's all ready to be hung on the tree. So I just want to take a moment and ask you, how do you store your fabric scraps? I keep my medium sized scraps in this vintage suitcase and I've got them all color coordinated in these Ziploc bags and I squeeze the air out of them so they fit really well in this suitcase. I've got all kinds of different scraps here. I think this system works really well, but I struggle with my small scraps. I've got this basket and I've just chucked them all in there. So I would like to know what you do with your small scraps. Maybe I should do the Ziploc system with these as well. I'm not sure. If you've got any suggestions for me or anyone else, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. I would love to know what you all do. All right, back to crafting. I've got this clear plastic Christmas ornament from my stash. I picked it up from the local dollar store years ago. And I have an assortment of some different patterns and color of scraps. I am cutting them down into small squares. Uh, they're, I'm gonna guess approximately two centimeters by two centimeters. Honestly, I'm, I didn't measure, I just started to cut. And it's okay if they are all uneven. And I like to scrunch up some of the fabrics because they were quite stiff. And so that'll just make it easier to decoupage. So yes, I am using my decoupage, decoupage glue put out by DecoArt, but feel free to use any adhesive that you like. So I really like the matte finish. So I'm applying a layer to the plastic ornament and I'm gonna press my squares down into place. Remove any of those extra strand, excess strands of threads that come off of your fabric strips. So I'm gonna just continue to cover the ornament, randomly placing the little pieces of fabric all over. You just wanna make sure you have good coverage underneath and then put more over top. I have seen some people dilute their glue. You can totally do that. But my glue was actually behaving really well with the fabric, so I didn't need to do that. Now I do end up changing one thing, but I will show you that here in a bit. So I have my ornament all covered, but I didn't like how those white patches were. They were just a little too bright. So I'm going back in and covering up those patches with some coffee dyed fabric that I had in my stash. And I think it looks so much better. So once you have that all done, you wanna set it aside and allow it to dry. And then that is when I also decided that I'm like, I don't like the shiny top of the ornament. So. I am covering it up with this Whisper chalk paint. Feel free to use anything that you have. Now, I should have added a coat of some gesso first. I find that paints adhere to plastics better when you do that. But of course, you could use spray paint as well. That works good as well. Or you could just leave it alone. I decided I wanted to paint mine. So everything is all dry. Now I decided that I wanted to distress the ornament top. So I'm using some potting soil. Uh, archival ink it's a permanent ink and I'm just gonna brush some on on the ornament top and then I allow that to dry all right everything is dry and now I wanted to add just a little bit more of a whimsical touch I'm adding a strip 
of some coffee dyed fabric and I'm creating a bow. Now, of course, you can decorate your ornament any way you'd like. If you just want to tie on a simple bow with some jute twine, that would be great or add some greenery or berries. I think that would be beautiful. But I like the simplicity of this. I think it looks really, really beautiful. It definitely has a country primitive farmhouse look to it. I think it's just gorgeous. So I'll just trim it off and then I'm gonna use some jute twine to create a hanger. And then it'll be all ready for our Christmas tree or this would make a beautiful gift if you created a set of three or more. This next ornament is super, super easy. You're going to need a selection of some lace scraps and a selection of some ornaments. These are plastic. And I'm gonna show you how to do the complete one using the clear ornament and this white lace. You'll need to pre-cut some string as well. So I'm just cutting my lace down to size so it will fit around our ornament you want to make sure you keep those scraps, of course, so I set those ones aside. Next, I'm gathering the lace up around the top of the ornament, and then I'm going to take the string and tie it off. I do wrap the string around a couple of times because I wanted to try and get this nice and tight, and then I just tie it off in a knot. You can see that we can access the little ornament topper still. Next, I am just going to trim off any of the excess fabric at the top to create a really pretty ruffled look. And then you are going to need to gather up some scrap trim if you have it on hand. I dove into my little stash that I had and I chose a selection that I thought would be so pretty for this ornament. I wrapped it around just underneath that ruffle and I tied a really simple bow and I left the tails kind of long. I really like that look. Next, I just used another scrap of some trim that I had and I created a little hanger for our ornament. Just need to pull back the ruffles and then string it through, tie a knot, and it's ready to go. I'm gonna just show you a couple other little styles that I created quickly here. I had this beautiful light teal lace. It's actually from one of my daughter's old tops. I think it's beautiful over the silver. And this lace looks gorgeous over the gold. I love how that looks, very effective. And here they all look together, ready to be hung on the tree. I love the woodland look and I found a really, really cool technique that I will have a link to down in my description box. Somebody made these mushrooms and they used styrofoam balls as the top. So I am going to cut this two inch ball in half. Use any size that you have in your stash. I'm using this metal lid from a candle and it is four inches in diameter. Now you just need to adjust the size to fit around whatever styrofoam ball you're using. So I traced around this with a black pen and then I'm gonna use my scissors to cut it out. This ornament was actually inspired by something that I had seen on Pinterest. All right, so next you're going to need some needle and some thread. As you can see, I uh, doubled up on my thread and then I have a nice large knot so it doesn't pull through. And then you're gonna do a simple running stitch around the edge of your circle. We want to create a little pouch. I do have another tutorial on how I have made some mushroom ornaments. I will have that video link down for you down below. It's an old one, but it is so cute. It's definitely a must see. So continue to stitch around the edge until you get to the other end. I did start and finish on the inside. 
So here's our little pouch. I snipped the strings off so they remained nice and long so I can still tie them off. You wanna slip your foam round inside the little pouch and just adjust the fabric around it. And then you'll wanna pull your strings tight and then tie a knot tight. I think this is coming together really well. Now this fabric has frayed a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how we can just make sure that that doesn't happen. The golden yellow one is actually a smaller one and I love how that one looks as well. You can do these in so many fun and whimsical colors. So here I've got a nice sturdy cotton fabric and I'm just cutting out a little circle. You could use some felt fabric as well. And then you're going to take your hot glue gun and you're going to generously apply some hot glue to the center and just around the edge just to help prevent that fabric from fraying. So I wanted to make sure that the fabric stuck to the center so I just pushed it in just a little bit. And then you can go to your dollar store and, or out in the forest and get some branches. I got these from my local dollar store. I like the little nubs that they have and it's nicely cut off. It's nice and flat. I also thought these would make great mushroom stems. Aren't these fun? And it's in perfect style to what I do here on my channel, that nature inspired woodland look. I love it. So I just added some hot glue and then chose the stump that I wanted and applied it to the bottom of our mushrooms. Now you gotta remember mushrooms come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. All right, so these are straight pins. You can find these in the jewelry section and I also have um, just some uh, thread needles. And I'm using that to poke a hole in the top as we're creating an ornament hanger. So this eye hook is about an inch long. It fits really well into the larger mushroom. And I just added some hot glue and pushed that into place. And then for the smaller one, I'm using um, an eye hook that's about three quarters of an inch. And same thing, I just added hot glue and then push it down into the foam. And then there you have a nice little ornament hook. Next, I am just going to be using some thread. This is embroidery thread, and I'm going to just tie it off to create a hanger. Oh, I'm loving these so much. I'm definitely making more. I'm gonna dive into my velvet stash to create some velvet mushrooms as well. All right, I'm sharing another Pinterest inspired ornament. I had this quilt backing and I also had this cotton fabric, a selection of cotton fabrics. These two are quilting fabrics. You can see that this one's torn a little bit. And then I ha also had a scrap of felt that I had started a project on and it was a fail. So I kept it though, I knew I could reuse this piece. So this is the quilt backing. I am just going to lay my pieces together. I'm creating like a sandwich of sorts. So I've got my felt, my quilt backing, and then this sturdy cotton fabric that I am going to be laying on top. I'm trimming down my quilt backing first. I wanted to even out all the edges because they were quite uneven. And I'm creating a rectangle shape right now. So I'm gonna take this thicker cotton fabric and I am going to be trimming that down as well, just a little bit. I am going to be creating a roof peak. That's right, a roof peak. So I'm cutting off the triangles on each at the top of each corner, just like you see I'm doing right here. And then I'm going to lay my quilt backing down and I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm not gonna worry about this being perfect like for the quilt backing, but I did try to match up my cuts for the cotton fabric. So I'm gonna just continue to trim this down as needed. As you can see, I did leave a little bit of an edge all the way around. So once you've got that all cut down to size, you'll want to glue your quilt backing onto your 
Whatever fabric you're using, of course, I'm gonna be using this nice, sturdy cotton fabric. Glue that into place all the way around. So once you have those two pieces glued together, next you're going to wanna to lay that on top of your felt, and then you want to cut your felt out, but we're not gonna glue this all together just yet. I'll show you that here in a bit. All right, so now for our pattern fabric. I'm using this green one and I'm just lining it up onto the roof peak, just like you see here, I'm flipping it over. And then I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to just trace out the roof line. Then I'm gonna use my fabric scissors to tr uh, cut it out. Next, I will be grabbing that really pretty floral pattern fabric. It kind of reminds me of Primitive Country Farmhouse. I think it's so, so pretty. So I'm just going to cut that down and I created a little door shape, just in a rectangular shape, and I'm just trimming it up to make sure all the e sides are even. Lay that down into place to make sure that I have the right size for this piece. All right, so now I dug into my stash of embroidery, embroidery floss and I chose this brown color. I unraveled a long section and then I got my needle and I threaded it on and I made sure I tied a really good knot on the opposite end. So I am going to stitch this on, our roof on. You could glue it down or you could use a sewing machine instead, but I wanted that hand stitched look. So I'm just going to do a basic running stitch all the way around the edge. Okay, so I have the roof all stitched down. Now I'm just going to tie off a basic knot. I am not a professional embroidery, um, embroidery artist here, but you can just see that you can create a really, really beautiful effect by doing some hand stitching. And if you make a mess, it's okay. This is all gonna be covered up. So next I am going to be stitching the door on as well. Same technique and I'm using the same color of embroidery floss. All right, so the door and the roof are all stitched. Next, I am doing some windows. Now, I didn't use any fabric for their windows. I just decided to create the window shape by using stitching. So I'm just going to create a basic square shape using the running stitch. I just eyeballed this. I don't have any measurements, but feel free to measure everything as needed if you feel that you need that. So once you've got your square all stitched out, I went back to the middle of the top and now I'm going down the center of our window. I'm creating that window frame. Next, I just crossed up on an angle or sorry, cross down on an angle. And now I'm going to stitch across the other way to create that T shape. So I do the same thing on the opposite side. Of course, that is optional. You could just do one window if you'd like, all right, so the original that I had seen, they did some beautiful embroidery work on the side right here. I decided that I wanted to create a tree. Now remember, I have no idea what I'm really doing, so I'm just kind of winging it. So I did a straight stitch up with my brown, and now I'm doing just some random seed stitching to create 
the trunk of a tree. So I was just kind of filling it in just a little bit. I did still want that random stitched look, so I didn't fill it in completely, but there are lots of tutorials on how to do embroidery. So if you're wanting to create a different look, then I highly suggest that you do a search to see all the different stitches that you can do. So I'm gonna just continue to stitch my trunk using the seed pattern, which is just random stitches. Whereas as I get to the bottom, I did end up fanning it out to create the thicker base like an actual tree. So I'm really happy with how that looks. So now I'm going to go ahead and now start adding the evergreen portion. Now the first few stitches, I did make sure that they were kind of pointing down towards the ground, like an actual tree would. And then again, I started to do some seed stitching to create some random looking branches, just like an actual tree. If you yourself do embroidery, then please feel free to leave any suggestions down in the comments section for myself or for others. Uh, but I do do a little bit of embroidery and this is something that I have done, which is again, the seed stitch. It's really easy. Again, it's just random stitches. Now I did put some intent to this. I wanted it to actually look like a tree. So I'm actually really pleased with how this ended up turning out. Um, another suggestion would be to add an applique or maybe some other decoration. But again, I'm really happy with that, that turned out. So I am going to be stitching around the edge, but I end up making a mistake and I will show you that here in a minute. But I first wanted to attach my ornament hanger. So I'm just using uh, this trim that I had in my stash and I'm just going to glue that into place at the top. So at this point I am going to be gluing all my knots down to make sure everything stays in place and nothing will unravel on me. Uh, this of course is optional. Now this is where I messed up. I ended up gluing my felt to my base and I wanted to do that stitching first. I forgot that I wanted to do that stitching, but I'm like, well, it's too late now. So I did not glue right up to the edge. As you saw, I was gluing on the quilt backing first. So I'm like, well, okay, I still have some room to do my stitching around the edge, thankfully. So I went ahead and did that. It was a little trickier to do it this way. So if you are going to be stitching like this, then I highly recommend that you do it before you glue all your pieces together like I started to do. So as you can see, it worked out just fine. I'm happy with how it looks. So now we can finish gluing all the edges down. So I'm just going in with my glue gun nozzle and I'm adding just enough glue and I'm gently pressing it down just so it doesn't ooze out. And just be careful that you don't burn your fingers here. My glue gun is a lower temp glue gun, so I don't typically have any issues with this, but if you're unsure, then definitely use those finger protectors. Those finger protectors do not fit my fingers, so I didn't use them. So now I'm adding a button. I thought it would be really cute to add a little doorknob. Love that, turned out so cute. And again, I'll have the link to my inspiration down in the description box below. And here is a recap of all the ornaments we made together today.
As always, I would love to know which one is your favorite. Here is some more ornament inspiration for all of you here to the right, and we'll see you in the next one. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here today. Take care. Bye.